The Buddha once said that all skillful qualities are rooted in heedfulness. And this applies to goodwill as well. It's always important to keep that perspective in mind, that context in mind, when you're developing goodwill as a meditation practice. We're developing goodwill because it's dangerous if we don't. You look at it in the principle of karma. In fact, when the Buddha talks about people developing goodwill, it's often in that context that realizing that you may have done something that's harmed other people or harmed yourself, you've broken the precepts, and you realize that it's harming not only them, but it's also going to come back and harm yourself. And you want to make sure you don't do that again. You want to make sure that you act on skillful principles, skillful motivation. So this is why you develop goodwill along with the other Brahma Viharas, as a way of strengthening your motivation to act skillfully. There's that famous sutta where two acrobats are up on the end of a bamboo pole. And the teacher who's standing on the pole says to a student who's standing on his shoulders, you know, you look after me and I'll look after you, and that way we'll both come down safely. And she says, no. You look after yourself and I'll look after myself, and that way we'll both come down safely. In other words, you take care of your sense of balance and I'll take care of my sense of balance. And that's how we'll be able to help one another along. And the Buddha says that in that particular case, the student was right. But then he goes on to say that by looking after yourself, you look after others, but also looking after others, you look after yourself. That by being kind to others, thoughtful, compassionate, you're also looking after your own best interests. And this is why we develop goodwill. There's that famous story where King Basenadi is alone in his bedroom with his queen. And he turns to her and says, Is there anyone you love more than yourself? Of course, he's hoping she will say, Yes, Your Majesty, you. But she doesn't. She says, No. And is there anyone you love more than yourself? And the king has to admit, No. That's the end of that scene. So the king goes down to see the Buddha and reports what happened. And the Buddha says, you know, She's right. You could survey the whole world over, and you'll never find anyone that you love more than yourself. At the same time, you have to think about other people. They love themselves fiercely, too. And the Buddha's conclusion here is interesting. It's not a dog-eat-dog -dog world. He's simply saying that if you love yourself, then you don't want to harm anyone else. Because if you harm others, on the one hand, they're not going to be happy. If your happiness depends on their misery, they're not going to be happy and they're not going to stand for it. And that harm is going to come back at you one way or another. So this is our primary motivation for developing goodwill. It's not that the mind is naturally compassionate or naturally benevolent or kind. It has the potential for kindness, but it has all kinds of other potentials as well. We do have the potential to be cruel. There are Tongues are like knives, our arms and our hands are like guns. We can do all kinds of good or harm with these things. So this is why heedfulness lies at the base of goodwill. It's a question of getting your motivation straight. So how do you do it? In the text, the Buddha simply says, you wish thoughts of goodwill to the east, south, west, north. Spread it in all directions, in the same way that a trumpet player would play a note and the note would go in all directions. And you're trying to make it totally limitless. That's all he says. Later works expand on this idea. They say you should start with yourself. Just tell yourself, may I be happy, free from suffering. 
May I look after myself with ease. And then you spread that thought to people who are close to your heart and then gradually work out benefactors, good friends, people you're more neutral about, and people are actually your adversaries until you finally get to all beings everywhere. So you might want to start with yourself first. This is not necessarily the case. Some people actually find it easier to think thoughts of goodwill to someone who's been their benefactor, a person who's helped them. Whoever you find it easiest, start with that person first. And think about what it means to have goodwill for that person. It doesn't mean you're going to be there for that person all the time, simply that whatever you do and say and think that's going to have an impact on that person, you don't want it to harm them. And if possible, you want them to act skillfully too, because it's not that you're wishing them happiness. It's going to be like a magic wand that will light up a little light someplace in their head. After all, there is that phrase, may they look after themselves with ease, may they know how to behave in such a way that actually does lead to true happiness. And this is where goodwill goes deeper than just hoping that people have a nice life. You hope that they, too, will act on skillful intentions. And is, is there any way that you can help that person act on skillful intentions? Think about this. In other words, metta is not just a process of repeating a phrase over and over in your head. You contemplate the quality of goodwill and what it really means to have goodwill in the context of karma, in the context of that principle of heedfulness. And the same as when you're extending thoughts of goodwill to yourself. When you say, say to yourself, may I be happy, what kind of happiness do you want? There's a lot that's been written on people who feel they don't deserve to be happy. In fact, I was reading recently a Dharma teacher saying that most people don't have enough time when they're doing metta meditation to think about anybody else, so they should focus all their goodwill on themselves as a healing process. And if you have trouble wishing for your own true happiness, then you may want to spend extra time here. But you can't stop there. Because remember, the whole purpose of this is to be skillful in your actions. And try to develop an attitude that there's nobody out there that you would like to harm. So spend some time in yourself and think about what it would really be, mean to truly have goodwill for yourself. It doesn't mean eating a lot of dove chocolates or indulging little pleasures. It means trying to act in a skillful way, realizing that your actions are going to have an impact. Now consequences that can many times go farther than you might even think. So in this case, having goodwill for yourself means being mindful and being alert. It's not always the case that you start with people who are close to your heart or with yourself. There's one case where the Buddha says you're being sawed up, cut up by saws, by a group of bandits. He said, you should start with them, start with spreading thoughts of goodwill to those people. May they find you happiness. This is going to be hard. But the reason you're doing this is because you don't want to act unskillfully in that case. You don't want your mind to be obsessed with thoughts of revenge. Because suppose they kill you with those thoughts. Do you want to be a spirit coming back to haunt those people? Do you want that to be your reason for living? your purpose in taking on another life. It's a miserable life. So again, it's for your own true happiness that you spread thoughts of goodwill to people who are really being harmed, harmful to you, hurting you, hurting people you love, hurting large mem numbers of the human race. You can't have ill will for these people. So one of the important exercises in goodwill is asking yourself, is there anybody out there that you really do have ill will for? 
in other words, people you would like to see suffer, and then try to think it through. Remember, you're not just thinking that may they be happy as they continue to do harm. You're wishing may that person see the error of his or her ways and stop doing that harm, realizing that it's not in his or her best interest. May that person understand what true happiness is and what the causes of true happiness are. Now, is that something you cannot wish even for evil people? Part of the mind says, well, I'd like to see them squirm a little bit first. There's that story of Angulimala in the canon. Angulimala had killed almost a thousand people and then suddenly was converted by the Buddha, ordained and became an arahant. And a lot of people were upset that he was getting off scot-free. Here he was, after murdering all those people, and now it seems like he's got a free pass out of jail. And so they threw things at him. He'd be on his arms round and they'd throw pottery at him, break his head open. He'd come back from his arms round all bloody. And the Buddha says, well, remember, it could have been a lot worse. So those are the people who continue to have ill will for somebody who had changed his ways. They're upset that the way karma works, it doesn't mean that you have to die for every time you've killed somebody. Karma is a lot more complex than that. But the fact that he'd become an arahant meant that he was no longer killing anybody. The world was a lot better place because he had seen the error of his ways and stopped. So go through your list of people you don't like. Remember, we're not asking you to like the people. Just learn how to develop goodwill. May that person see the error of his ways. May he stop that unskillful behavior. May he learn how to behave in a skillful way instead. May he understand hap true happiness and how you find true happiness. And every time you sense yourself thinking thoughts of ill will about other people, stop and remember these points. And it's part of your practice of developing goodwill. You don't want to get you want to get to the point where whoever you think about, you can feel this kind of goodwill for. Now it's important that you also have a sense of well being as you do this. This is why if you find that the goodwill meditation is getting dry, you stop and you work on your breath. Try to develop a way of breathing that feels good inside. It feels nourishing inside. John Lee once said, if you don't have any sense of well-being or pleasure inside, then it's hard to wish for other, be other beings' happiness. He gave the image of a large water tank. If there's water in the tank, then when you open the faucet, cool water comes out. If there's no water in the tank, you open the faucet, nothing but air comes out. And it's the same with your goodwill. There has to be a sense of well-being inside for it to really have force. So the breath meditation and the goodwill meditation help one another along. There are times when you need to develop goodwill in order to just be able to settle down with the breath, and other times when you need to work with the breath so that the goodwill has a felt sense of well-being inside. So you practice these things together. If you find the breath meditation is getting dry, stop and remind yourself why you're here. It's for the sake of true happiness. Not just your own true happiness, the happiness of others, too. Back when I was um, in Thailand, I'd go for alms every morning. There were days when some really poor people would put food in my bowl. And I come back, and it really would strike me. Here I am, the beneficiary of a poor person's generosity. I've got a lot to repay. And so I dedicate my practice to that person. So remember, when you're meditating here, it's not just for you. Other people are going to benefit. The example of more meditators in the world, 
more people trying to train their minds. And the fact that as you get your mind more and more in shape, you're coming from a position of strength, a position of well-being. You're more likely to act in a skillful way. And that way everybody benefits. So this is how we practice goodwill meditation in the context of the Buddhist teachings on karma and in the context of that principle of heedfulness. You're doing this because if you don't do it, there's a lot of danger. There's a lot of trouble ahead. But if you are able to develop goodwill for all, the world is a lot safer place, and you're a lot safer person in that world. <laughs>